Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and this is video three in lesson 17. We'll be talking here about the evaluation theorem. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. It's down here. Uh, and we'll be doing two examples, 5758 five, from Calculus Simplified to illustrate the evaluation theorem. OK, so um, before talking about the evaluation theorem, which is a really um, important and useful and go-to theorem for calculating definite integrals, uh, I'm going to assume that you're comfortable with definite integrals. If not, uh, go ahead and take a look at video um, 17.1 for details about what a definite integral is, you know, what the uh, notation is about, what these numbers tell you. Um, but I'm going to assume you're de uh, comfortable with definite integrals intuitively. Um, and in this video, we'll talk more about how you calculate them. First thing I'll mention is that this is the very first foray in our course into calculating definite integrals. So, you know, as you can see from these two examples, we're not getting very complicated yet. The integrand will get much more complicated in later videos, um, but we're sort of starting simple at first. And before we get even to calculating the definite integral uh, using the evaluation theorem, I'm just going to note, if I zoom in here, I'll read the theorem in a second, but we need an antiderivative to um, use in this theorem. So let me first remind you what an antiderivative is. So suppose I have a function little f. Uh, we call another function, capital F, the antiderivative of little f if it differentiates to that function. So for example, um, we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x. That's the power rule. Okay? So if I started with a function little f of x equals 2x, and I pose the question to you, give me, give, terrible handwriting, sorry, give me an antiderivative, antiderivative of f. Okay? One answer you might say is capital F of x equals x squared. Why? Because let's check the condition. The derivative of x squared is 2x, which equals the little f of x that I gave you. Okay? So whereas differentiation of a function yields another function, and we, we call that, as I just said, differentiation, um, anti-differentiation means the opposite. It means you start with a function, and you try to figure out a function that differentiates to, that, to the one you started off with, okay? Um, you might give me other answers over here, you know? So the answer is not unique. You might say um, f of x equals x squared plus 7, right? And then we check the derivative of this is also 2x. So x squared plus 7 is also an antiderivative of 2x. So is x squared plus uh, 39. So is x squared minus 14. So in general, when we find the antiderivative of a function, capital F of x, it's going to have a plus c. This is where the famous plus c you might have heard about from calculus that all instructors always say, don't forget your plus c, um, comes from. Because the derivative of a function that looks like this, f prime of x, uh, is just f prime of x, right? The derivative of c is zero. So that explains why you can have an infinite number of antiderivatives for 2x, but they're all of a very specific form. They all are members of a very specific family. x squared plus a number, you know, x squared plus 39, x squared minus 14, so on and so forth. Okay, that is a quick review of um, antiderivatives. So let's take a look at this first example. It says the power rule tells us that the derivative of x cubed is equal to 3x squared. Use that result to help us calculate this. Okay, first thing I'll do is I want to interpret the information we have just been given. So if this is little f of x, then this is big f of x. In other words, um, f of x, big f of x, equals x cubed is an antiderivative of little f of x equals 3x squared. Again, instead of differentiating 3x squared, we ask what function, when I differentiate it, yields 3x squared. And one answer is x cubed. Like we just saw, another answer is x cubed plus, pick your favorite number, 39, 14, whatever. Don't know why I keep using those particular numbers, but oh well. Um, so the second part of this we have not gone over yet. Use this result to help you calculate that. Okay, That's the definite integral of this little f function here. 
So this is definite integral from a to b of little f of x dx. So now we're going to go over down here and talk about the evaluation theorem. So let's do that. Um, in previous videos, namely video 13.2 or 17.2, we talked about how to, and also 17.1, we talked about how to calculate definite integrals using geometric formulas. Um, we don't really have a very well-known or sort of simple geometric formula for calculating the area between the graph of y equals 3x squared and bounded by x equals 0 and x equals 1, right? That is what this definite integral is going to yield. But we do have a way to do it using calculus. So that's the evaluation theorem. Let me show you what that is. What does it say? It says, suppose f is continuous on AB. So that's a condition we have to verify. And we have found an antiderivative. Great, we just did that. Then, wow, already a conclusion. <laughs> then the definite integral from A to B of little f of x dx is, you know, substitute in B, uh, x equals B, into capital F of x, substitute x equals A, and then subtract. That's the evaluation theorem. So again, hypothesis, suppose f is continuous on AB and you have found an antiderivative, then you get to use this formula. So before we go off and verify these two hypotheses, I just want to mention what's going on here. The definite integral is literally the difference of the antiderivative's values at the endpoint. So that's a really good way to summarize what the uh, main result of the evaluation theorem is. Okay, going back over here, right? Two hypotheses to verify. Um, the function we are dealing with here, 3x squared, um, is that continuous on the interval of integration, right? A, B, so 0, 1. And the answer is yes, because 3x squared is a polynomial. And that's a continuous function. It's just a continuous function, which means that it's continuous for all x values, including the ones in here. Awesome. So verify that. Um, and then number two, we want to actually find an antiderivative, but we did that, and we did that by interpreting the information they gave us within the context of what an antiderivative means. Um, so rewind a few minutes ago to see how we um, determine that. Great. So we have found an antiderivative. Then we can finally apply the result. So the integral from a to b of little f of x dx is capital F of X evaluated from A to B. This is kind of new notation you may not have seen before. What does this bracket mean? You know, this is shorthand. You might also see um, the capital F of X function and then just a line and then A and B down here. These are all different notations for the same thing. They all mean calculate F of B minus F of A. Right? So in this case, we want to calculate f of 1 minus f of 0, because a is 0 and b is 1. Um, so we're inserting 1 into x cubed, so I get 1 cubed. Subtracting, inserting 0 into x cubed, so I get 0 cubed. And that's just 1 minus 0, which is 1. So this is one of the you know really impressive things about calculus. I mean, to anyone who is wondering how to calculate areas under curves, right? Especially something like this, a curved area, geometry, uh, Euclidean geometry has real trouble dealing with this. Um, other than circles, uh, it's mostly about lines, right? Uh, triangles, rectangles, trapezoids, um, polygons. So calculus, however, is like no problem. Um, the area that you're looking at right here is equal to one. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's do this all over again for this last example here. Um, same idea. Um, we're told that the power rule, we're reminded that the power rule tells us that the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. Use this result to help you calculate this. Okay, I'm going to speed things up a little bit since we've now done all the background for picking out what's needed. Um, so this is a, this is b, this is little f of x. So we want to calculate the definite integral from a to b of little f of x dx. We know from the evaluation theorem it's going to be equal to this, provided those two hypotheses are satisfied. So question, is the integrand function, is that continuous on the interval 1 to 4, right? That's the interval in this problem. 
Um, and the answer is yes. The only place where this function is not continuous is at x equals 0, because it's not defined. Also, it's not defined for any negative x values, but you know, in both those cases, we are far away from all that, uh, all those problem areas. So is it continuous? Yes, it is. Um, and now we need to find an antiderivative. Well, remember, like we talked about, if this is little f of x, an antiderivative is a function whose derivative is little f of x. Here is one such function, right? If f of x is square root of x, then we're told here that the derivative is 1 over 2 root x. And we know this, right? We could calculate the derivative here using the power rule, x to the 1 half. Um, so we have found uh, or interpreted from what we're given um, an antiderivative. So check as well. Great. So now I can apply my fundamental theorem of calculus. So the integral, uh, I should say my evaluation theorem, right? Some people also call this evaluation theorem the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so uh, the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over 2 square root of x dx is going to be square root of x evaluated from 1 to 4, which means we substitute in 4 in for x, subtract, substitute in 1 in for x. So we have the square root of 4, which is 2, not plus or minus 2. See one of the first videos in the series for um, why not. Square root of 4 is 2, minus 1, so that is also 1. <laughs> Uh, so it is a pure coincidence that for both of these um, exercises, we got a value of 1 for over here and over here for the uh, definite integral. Okay, um, just to mention a couple of quick things as we finish the video here. This was mostly a video about the evaluation theorem, but the evaluation theorem contains suppositions, right? One of them is about continuity. So that's why we studied continuity earlier on in this course. The other one is about antiderivatives. So that's why I spent a little while at the beginning of this video talking about antiderivatives. You might be wondering, and this is what every calculus student at some point realizes and then wonders, this evaluation theorem is pretty cool. You know, this definite integral is a, is a really cool concept. And it just makes it so easy to evaluate it. I just plug in B, plug in A, and subtract but I plug it into the antiderivative. Um, so how do I find the antiderivative? Well, we kind of you know, took an easier way out for these two examples. Um, I gave you enough information so that if you knew conceptually what the antiderivative does, it's the function that differentiates to the integrand, little f, um, then you can just pick out the antiderivative. Oh, that's f of x. Oh, that's f of x, right? A harder question in calculus is how to find antiderivatives of a general function. Um, and there are many, many techniques for doing that that we will study later on in the course. Actually, we'll study a couple. Um, the other more advanced techniques are studied in a Calculus 2 course. But truth be told, that is the hardest part of the evaluation theorem. Verifying the continuity of the integrand is usually pretty straightforward. Actually calculating f of b minus f of a is just, you know, arithmetic basically, but finding an antiderivative for the integrand, that is tough in general. Um, anyway, so we will do much more of that in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.